Hey, Dr. Osborne here with Gluten Free Society and a research alert. So, question today Do antibiotics contribute to celiac disease and gluten sensitivity? Big topic in research right now. So, wanted to have this conversation and update you on what research is showing. So, research shows antibiotics are linked to celiac disease. As you can see here in this study, the positive association between antibiotic use and subsequent CD celiac disease, but also with lesions that may represent early celiac disease, suggests that intestinal dysbiosis may play a role in the pathogenesis of celiac disease. That, what does that mean? That means that taking an antibiotic can disrupt your good bacteria and that that process might play a role in the development of celiac disease. Now, Full disclosure here, these authors go on to state that this research study does not dis directly show a causal relationship, meaning that all antibiotics don't cause celiac disease, you know, period, but that there is definitely an association with those with greater degree of antibiotic use developing celiac disease. So the big question is why? If it doesn't happen to everyone, but it happens to some, what is potentially the reason why? Well. Digging through some more research, this study done from 1966. Now, I show you this. It's a very old research study because it shows that as early as 1966, we knew that antibiotics could increase the severity and the incidence of candidiasis. What is that? Candidiasis or candida is a yeast overgrowth or a yeast infection. So we know antibiotics can increase yeast overgrowth and yeast infection. You can see here the highlight that Patients on antibiotics experience proliferation of candida albicans in the alimentary canal is no longer a point for dispute. In essence, it's fact. Antibiotics can cause yeast overgrowth in the gut. That's what the alimentary canal is. So we know that antibiotic use can cause yeast overgrowth. So let's take this one step further. Here's some research. This was published in Lancet in 2003. The topic is candida albicans a trigger in the onset of celiac disease. In, in this study, uh, the postulation was that the protein that can be produced by candida uh, called HWP1, which is a hyphal wall protein that's produced by yeast, contains a protein sequence that is identical or very similar to known celiac disease-related alpha-gliadin and gamma-gliadin T-cell epitopes. Now, what in the heck does that mean? What does that mean? That means that the protein that candida produces looks like gluten. And so, we have an antibiotic contributing to a candida overgrowth, candida overgrowth causing a production of a protein that looks like gluten, potentially creating a reaction in somebody and triggering or being a contributing factor to triggering their gluten sensitivity or celiac disease. Now, again, this is a postulation, but we go forward in time to more literature, more research. This study published more recently found that the protein HWP1, that same protein that looks like gluten, okay, could actually trigger celiac disease onset and genetically susceptible individuals. Now, those of you who've been following me for any length of time know that I'm a big fan of genetic testing to help identify the risk of whether or not a person should or shouldn't eat gluten. And this is one of the reasons why. The genetic susceptibility piece is very important. This is why not everybody who ever takes an antibiotic develops celiac disease, but those that are genetically susceptible may be greater candidates because antibiotics cause a yeast overgrowth and the yeast can produce a protein that looks like gluten. And so these genetically susceptible gluten individuals can go on to develop or have that triggering effect which causes the disease to manifest. So what's the take home message here? The take home message, very, very simple is antibiotics can cause a yeast overgrowth. The yeast overgrowth can contribute to what's called molecular mimicry of gluten leading to a possible gluten-like reaction. Now, I see this in my office all the time. People come to see me for, for, um, for health issues, different health issues, and, and finding candida overgrowth is one of the most common things that we do find for people who maybe even are already on a gluten-free diet, but they're still struggling to recover from their celiac-like symptoms. So, take-home message here is Use antibiotics with intelligent discrimination. You know, a lot of times doctors will prescribe an antibiotic 
just in case, right? Imagine my fingers doing air quotes right now, just in case. And that's not an intelligent discrimination use for an antibiotic. And then again, this is not me saying don't listen to your doctor, or this is not me saying don't take an antibiotic if your life is in jeopardy and you have a major infection. But when you're in the doctor's office and they say, well, it might be, an, it might be a bacterial infection. Why don't we try an antibiotic for a while? And they're not running labs and they're not running cultures and they're not really truly identifying whether you have a bacterial infection. That might not be the best use of the antibiotic for you, especially if you're genetically susceptible, if you have those gluten genes, because that antibiotic might trigger a candida overgrowth that sets you into a tailspin that makes you feel like you've just gotten major gluten exposure. So if you are gluten sensitive and you already know that you're gluten sensitive, the bigger take home message here is definitely use antibiotics with intelligent discrimination. Have that conversation with your doctor. Don't just take an antibiotic if there's a guess going on that there may be an infection. Like really get confirmation of that infection before just blindly taking that medicine. So this is Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten Free Society. Look, love your commentary below. Have antibiotics ever made you sick or made you feel like you were gluten? Love for you to share any stories that you might have. And as always, if you haven't before, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can get video updates from me. And as well, share this with somebody you think might have uh, benefit from it. And of course, go over to join us at glutenfreesociety.org. You can sign up for our gluten-free survival kit there. It's free for you. It shows you the inroads, the ins and outs, and all the things that you need to know about navigating the gluten-free journey. This is Dr. Osborne wishing you excellent health. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.